Turtles Party. My name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at the Turtle Utility Pack. Now, this was a completely legitimate Minecraft Pocket Edition client. Now, I don't mean like a hack client. I mean like how there's Optifine. This was basically an optimization for Minecraft Pocket Edition and Bedrock Edition. Well, unfortunately, what I'm guessing happened, and we'll check that in a second, is their domain was taken over by malicious actors, so we can go here. Now this looks a lot like a malicious GitHub in that there's no source code here, and it's just telling you if you want to install it, you should go to turtleclient.xyz and click the download button. After that, you should go through the setup, and then you'll see the turtle clients install. And then we can install it like that, uh, then console, you get it from there, and then, okay. And it's free software, and these guys' information is here. Now, I'm going to give a huge disclaimer. Don't witch hunt these people. Don't bother these people. I don't think these people had anything to do with it. I think uh, what happened is their domain expired and someone took it over. So what happens if we go to this site? Now, you may immediately be getting suspicion. Now, I've seen a couple versions of this. A Discord member got a Cloudflare-themed version. Here we've got reCAPTCHA, and that does actually go to the Google reCAPTCHA site. But if we click, I'm a human. Perfect, you're verified and ready to go. Oh, that's different. Okay, so I actually got a different different uh, hit this time. So what's happened then, I think, is a malicious ad network has taken over this domain. And as a result, we're now getting very different results than what we should be getting. I did actually just run the who is, and it's not expired. So what either happened is this went through a domain auction. Now let's just put this MI... MSIX file up on virus total. I can't actually run it on this computer because it doesn't have the right. It, this is an LTSC build of Windows which doesn't support MSIX, but we could get an idea. Oh, nothing super sketch so far. Let's take a closer look at this. The way the MSIX files work is they actually have a virtual file system that goes in its design like this, and this is where it would go if you actually ran the installer. Now, I don't like the fact that this NetGuard file hasn't. Uh, it doesn't have any detections, but I don't like the fact that when I ran it, nothing happens, although it is in my tray. Uh, okay, this is just this is just adware. But this time we got kind of lucky. And what's interesting is when we try it with a different browser, we get different results. So what's happening here, and I'm going to try... Uh, let's try Firefox, because Brave is probably just going to block it. I'm going to see if we can get the one we were after. Because first of all, we just got adware. This time we get World Profit Associates which is a blatant, uh, I, I don't even, oh, it's a, oh, it's some sort of, I think they call them a WSO, it's like a really scammy thing that they sell to people to try and make money, it's like Hustlers University for boomers, basically, and if we try it from a public VPN, we get a, we get a innocent looking lander, that's interesting. After a bit of trial and error, we finally get to a sketchy looking capture. After we click allow. Oh, it looks like we're just going around in circles. But give it a sec. Oh, oh. Uh, and we immediately head off to the, the McAfee scam. There is also a remaining page that is still online, turtleclient.pages.dev. And this one ranks highly on Google. But unfortunately, when you click it, it goes to... The malicious page. We'll have to give that a second because we've hit the rate limit again. Let's just see if anything else is uh, coming up on this site or if it's still rate limiting me. Oh, here we go! Oh my goodness, we just got it. I feel... <laughs> I don't know, I shouldn't feel lucky right now, but you have no idea how many times we tried this and it didn't work. But just now, we got it. So we can see this is going to download, this is going to execute, so this is going to be a malicious MSHTA file. That will then take us through there. So we click enter on that. A PowerShell window pops up, which is a very bad sign. We can see this PowerShell. Then we can actually find loads of malware went straight into the run box. We can actually see what the uh, malicious script does. This was so random. It's genuinely it's random. And these ones disguise themselves as audio files. In fact, uh, if you visit it with the right user agent, you do actually get an audio file. But if you visit it with the wrong user agent, uh, it executes malware. We can go to Procmon and we can see 
yeah, we can go to MSHDA and we can get a better idea of what this actually does. And really all we need to filter for in here is going to be process start because we know that it starts a PowerShell that does the dirty work. We can go here and wait for process create. And right here we can see all the arguments that were passed through. And here is where the actual malware goes. Now, this is a roundabout form of string encoding that leads to the next stage. I love how it even says system health uptown funk, because I guess the I guess the malware has to be pre or the URL has to be pre-coded. And now let's take a look on the sandbox at what exactly happens here. So first of all, the malicious MSHTA script is downloaded. That script immediately spawns a PowerShell with the same uh, command that we saw previously. And that PowerShell then spawns the PowerShell that does the real work. Now I'm going to make this bigger so that you can actually see it. And we can go through script tracer and see exactly what happens here. So this is our ultimate stage two destination. Now we can try open this in a new tab. May or may not work. And in this case, it does work. And we can see a horde of code that was just like the one I was looking at a few minutes ago. This is an essentially incomprehensible code, and down here is an ASCII cipher that we could uh, potentially get going with CyberChef. I guess cipher isn't really the right word. But in here is actually going to be another obfuscated PowerShell that is simply loaded into an array of call codes. This is quite a common way of storing it, although of course, and that's why it's taking so long, They are it's incredibly inefficient because you are at minimum quadrupling the size of the file by doing this. And then it looks like whatever's in this mess, I, I did a portion of it just to get a better idea, is base64 encoded. This could actually be dropping a PE file. We've also got some upload string, okay. And here's a bunch of checks that are probably just to detect a virtual machine. And then it looks like we get into actually dropping the final stage. They are really determined to stop you from understanding what's going on, but I think we got the gist of it. Now, depending on how unlucky you are, you're either going to end up with a Luma Stealer. If you're really unlucky, you might also end up with an async rat, which has increasingly uh, been dropped by this system, which of course is a lot worse. And this is what it looks like. It's a security by Cloudflare verification steps. Nothing here really looks off until you get to the Windows key plus R, which hopefully everybody who watches this channel knows that's not legit. But I did get a message about this in the Discord. And I think the real magic about click fix and its derivatives isn't that it's super smart and that you sitting here watching it are going to be like i might have fallen for this the magic of click fix is in the heat of the moment you're not thinking maybe you've had a few drinks you see that pop up and within four seconds you're hacked nothing you can do your credentials have already been exfiltrated you have to now, uh, once you've done that, you've got to change every single password you've ever used. Uh, you've got to probably, if you've saved your credit cards on your computer, you've got to cancel all of your credit cards. If you had any cryptocurrency, it's probably already gone. Like, it's an amazingly quick and devastating system. So that's going to be all for me for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you did, and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Bye!